it's offset because it's a different. I just need to move it to the middle. Basically, like the fit the screen button. Yeah, because we were. I was having to use a different format for the live we recorded, and now since we're back on a regular recording, I have to readjust it for that. That's all. So basically, we're gonna take it from the top. <laughs> no, no, I'm, we are good well, i'm recording right now we are up and running i am not going to redo it i can make that adjustment in screen i have my producer window so that is what the producer window is for <laughs> <laughs> all right so ladies and gentlemen right. without any further ado welcome to another one-on-one gag admin chat for today's topic what i would like to delve into we have sam on my left jeffrey's on the bottom left and will's on the under me is that how that your is, screen that is, is that is what we got all right we have your four admins in and i would like us all to do a one-on-one a nice little brainchild sam had we're going to dissect the mcu take one thing you would change about that entity and just let everyone discuss from there on your one-on-one is that the proper way of addressing your idea sam that is the proper way that is how the one-on-one works you take one thing from one ip you make a change and we discuss said change so that is a very very fitting introduction to how it rolls so so without further ado for the mc do mcu what i would change is we're gonna go way back in time back to when marvel had its fire sale when it sold off Spider-Man, when it sold off the X-Men, when it sold off everything involving those IP addresses and saying, what if Marvel did not sell those addresses? How do you guys believe the MCU would have played out if it had all of the Marvel umbrella with all of its addresses moving forward? So the intellectual property, so IP being the intellectual property. um, In fairness, they had their fire sale because that came at a time when Marvel was primarily a comic book studio. Like they were known mainly for comic books. They did not have a large... um, TV, movie, anything. Right, I guess cinema. Like, what what is all that falling? They didn't have a large media production base. Um, Didn't have any. Yeah, so I mean, like, when they were selling off characters and selling off the license for characters, um, many people may be familiar with how licensing works as far as movies go. Uh, Once you own the license for a particular movie, for a character, for... Um, like Disney, Disney is the best example. Disney will make a, they will release a short, a movie, a film or something every so many years so that they retain the rights to those characters so that they're the only person that can use those characters. Then they'll put that content in the vault. They won't do anything with it for a number of years. And then they re-release a updated version of it. Um, Maybe they changed the color. They added this, they added that. They do a remaster and that gives them the rights to that content for another bundle of years. Um, When Marvel first had their fire sale, they were a struggling comics company. And even though they are one of the big two, DC being the other, Marvel being one, it was just at a time when people weren't just, comics weren't flying off the shelves. So in order to make money and stay afloat, they did sell those rights off. And a lot of different companies came through and had plans and had intentions of using this content and using these characters for different things. And it just didn't always pan out. But because they used it, they retained the rights. And so uh, Spider-Man, when the first Spider-Man movie came out, Tobey Maguire... Uh, Sony, Sony had a hit that did really, really, really well. If we had had to wait until after Iron Man to see the first Spider-Man movie, I don't know that we would have gotten an Iron Man movie. And so 
because prior to Iron Man, the only other examples we had were the Punisher in like the late 80s with Dolph Lundgren. Um, Blade had made a movie. (laughs) Which one? Nick Fury. Yeah, Hasselhoff (laughs) doing the TV version. You know what I'm saying? Like there was nothing in play. Howard the Duck. Yeah, because... X Men right. was the only other one that had any level of success in that early, early two thousands phase. So we can argue all day whether they were quality or not, but, but it played well. But in terms of success, because it was still a good live action showing, maybe it didn't have the best script, maybe it didn't have the best writing, maybe not the best casting. A lot of different things you can pick apart with the individual films. But in terms of calling it a pass fail. It was a pass. And because of that, it actually helped pave the way for the future success. Because let me tell you something. To me, Tobey Maguire is Spider-Man. Like when I watched Into the Spider-Verse, that version of Spider-Man, that spoiler, died. To me, that was Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. That's how I see it. And then that's... So I don't know that if Marvel had been able to hold on to the rights, like if they had been doing well enough as a company to be able to hold on to the rights to these characters, you know, that would have altered the Fantastic Four movies. Because, I mean, we could have gotten a conceivably good Doctor Doom, maybe. Maybe, but you're also... I think you also have to look at, like, like the failures inform the future success sometimes. It's and a back to the future looking at what they, scenario. Yeah. Looking at what other people do wrong can help you not make the same mistakes. I think like to me, what I would say is they should not have made a contract that was like you can have the rights to these characters in perpetuity as long as you are making content. Because that is the part that leads to like bad movies. Because if they don't make a movie after a certain period of time, the rights just come back to Marvel because Marvel can come in and say, you're just sitting on this IP. You're not doing anything with it. One that we left out, Incredible Hulk with Universal. Yeah. That's the reason why there hasn't been a solo Mark Ruffalo Incredible Hulk. He always shows up in other people's movies because basically it's Universal somewhat licensing the character back to Marvel for the movies. Um I think that, like, even though, like, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans, I think, I think, like, the thing with the one-on-ones you have to always do is, like, look at what do what do you lose? You lose not only those movies, but you lose the X-Men cartoon, you lose the Spider-Man cartoon from the '90s. There were some other bad ones, Avengers United We Stand, and uh, (laughs) there was a Fantastic Four one, and you know some of that, but. A lot of that did have an impact on like people knowing who some of these characters are and getting you to a place where a studio will even green light an Iron Man movie because he's a house it's a household name character now, but in the nineties, not really. I mean he had his own cartoon that came on like the same block with X Men and all people cared about was X Men. I think a lot of it had to do with like Jim Lee and his art style and then that being adapted a lot on screen and people kind of connecting with that. So I think like if Marvel never gives it away, a lot of this stuff never gets on screen just because Marvel didn't have the resources at the time to like make it. Because even like signing the X-Men franchise over to Fox, like that cartoon, like season one was pretty much a rogue mission where like a bunch of animators and people who really really like the project kind of like did it on their own essentially like as like a project for fun and then they put it out and then they had to come back and get it but the biggest thing is like all this stuff is driven by toy sales so if there's no cartoon there's no toy sales and if there's no toy sales there's probably not drawing people back to the comics which means Marvel does Marvel even stay in business? I mean, so I'm fire sale not going to go into super, sacrifice it was, to get what we got. Well, yeah, because if you look at what they gave up, they gave up their most popular 
characters at the time. Their most popular comic characters in the 90s were Spider-Man, the X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Incredible Hulk. Nobody cared about Cap, really. Nobody cared about Iron Man, the Avengers, because the Avengers roster in the comics was like, you didn't know who you were going to get from issue to issue. It It was so in and out. The Avengers are worse and than the Justice League Justice in League. that everybody is a damn Avenger. Or they have been at some point. All of your, like literally every big name character in Marvel has been an Avenger. You can't say the same for Justice League. Like everybody is a Justice League. But most of the people that people know are from Justice League. But with Marvel, like everybody, they literally are handing out Avenger membership cards with superpowers. Oh, you have superpowers. If, Here's your your Avengers right. membership card. <laughs> if Mar if Marvel had signed a deal where it was like it was a five year deal, let's look at it. Five year deal, let's look at it. Because now it's at the now it got to the point where Disney was basically like the only way that we're going to get X Men back is to buy Fox because Fox is never going to like Give stop up making X Men movies. You know what I mean? They're, Clearly, they they stopped making they stopped making Fantastic Four movies. And because I think like after the last one, they were just like, we can't get this right. And we're it's not worth it. So if it goes back to Marvel, it goes back to Marvel. But with Spider-Man, it's like, that's the one where I really feel like it causes more damage because like now they have this like joint deal with Sony where Sony's allowing Spider-Man to show up in Avengers movies and Sony's allowing the Marvel team to do the creative and write the Spider-Man movies, but they're still making Venom and Morbius and Carnage and all that stuff. And they're trying to do their like Sinister Six universe without Spider-Man somehow, all because they still have all the rights to all the characters that are in Spider-Man. And as long as that's making money, they're never going to just be like, okay, we're just going to give all the Spider-Man stuff back to you guys. So then you have like the rumors where you're like, well, is Spider-Man going to show up in Venom too? Is Spider-Man going to show up in Venom? Is Spider-Man going to show up in Morbius? Are they? They're doing a Craven movie, like all this stuff. Like, who would care about Craven because... if he wasn't chasing Spider-Man? Nobody. I but... actually had the idea that the first Spider-Man movie, or the second Spider-Man movie, actually could have been a dope Craven villain. I like what they do with Mysterio, but I thought that. Like the way they've done Craven in the newer Spider-Man cartoon on Disney XD is really interesting because he's like, he's basically a YouTuber, and he has like all these drones with like cameras that follow him like on the hunt, and so he like live streams like his hunts, and so in the show he's like, I'm here to capture Spider-Man, and it's just like he's got like drones with like cameras and stuff like following him around as he chases that Spider-Man viral video. in the city, yeah. That's and it's like an interesting take on the character that you could easily do on screen, but is Sony going to give you the rights to Craven? Who does Sony want to put out there? And I think so much of it is like now with Venom making like however much money it made, now Sony feels like they can come back to the table and be like, well, we got success over here. And if y'all don't want to like take our input on what we want Spider-Man to be, we'll just slide them back on over here he could be in our universe and good luck getting people to understand why like Peter Parker is no longer in any of the Avengers movies. Um, I do have a kind of novice question. Just, I just want to get out for proper clarification purposes. Since we have into the spider verse and we have many different iterations of said Spider-Man could a miles Morales say be taking on the sinister six or since he is under the Spider-Man umbrella that he wouldn't be able to do that. Actually that goes into my one change, but I want to wait for it until Til you have the floor time for that. Yeah. Okay. I will. <laughs> let me just, let me just go back real quick to the original, to the original question. Um, it really comes down to a chicken and egg scenario. It is easy to pose the question of looking at it now with the success of the MCU as a whole. It's very easy to say, why did they do this? Why did they do that? But prior to them making the movie Iron Man, and even the movie Iron Man was a gamble. Prior to making that movie, there was nothing for them to base 
success on to say that they needed to keep anything they had. And for all intents and purposes, the Sony Spider-Man movie was very successful. That was a hit. It spawned a sequel and it spawned another sequel. We don't really talk about that third sequel. For many but, reasons. But even then, it still is recognized as a whole. That trilogy is still, the Raimi trilogy is still like. It's a success. It's a cornerstone of comic book movies. And, you know, even if you take the Blade trilogy, because before we had the MCU, comic book movies were hit or miss. They were hit or miss. And. Now that there is something definitive that we can use as a basis of a success meter, because even if you were to look at the success of, say, previous Batman films prior to The Dark Knight Returns, or excuse me, prior to The Dark Knight, you look at the Batman movies. They were good, but were they good? Good movies. You know what I'm saying? They were good because, hey, it's Batman on screen. You know what I'm saying? Anytime you get something that you don't have, if you're the first one to do something and you do a good enough job at it, it's successful. And then later on, it'll always kind of be revered as being the one that broke ground on that idea, on that concept. You know what I'm saying? Because... If you if you it's look foundational, at, there you go. Found the foundation because I was about to say if you look at like everybody, uh, there are very few people who do not like the Christopher Reeves portrayal of the character Superman. That is what established in our minds what Superman is supposed to be like. Now everybody that's seen the Superman movie or has seen the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. Every one of those people hasn't read a comic book to base it and say that, okay, this is what is. Most people base their idea or their concept of Superman off of Christopher Reeve's portrayal. And then when you move forward and you see like he did a cameo in Smallville, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's that part. Tom Welling's version Brandon Ruth's version and truthfully Brandon Ruth's version is perhaps the most faithful adaptation to what Christopher Reeves did but that movie tanked that movie was so bad and not because it was a bad movie just because it wasn't well received it wasn't well received because as much as people say they want the old stuff they don't old stuff with a new take which is not old stuff it's new stuff yeah. When you when you when you old, take something old, old and you do something, stuff? when you take something old and you do something new, it is no longer old. It is new, and Man of Steel was new, and that's why people are at least willing to accept Man of Steel because it's different enough that they don't have to make those comparisons, but they can allow it to remind them. And they can they can try to they can try to draw from what they know to say what they expect from it. So while it doesn't get a direct comparison, it does get a subliminal comparison. And I think if you take if you eliminate the Spider-Man movie and you eliminate the Fantastic Four movies in hopes of keeping them under the MCU. The X-Men movies. That is where Biff goes back and gives up the, you know, he, the, almanac. the almanac and you just, you change everything and maybe we don't have the same successful MCU because Marvel doesn't have the budget to then make Iron Man as good as it is. I mean, I think there's there's like positives and negatives, right? Like, I think that I think that on the negative side, it, it becomes 50-50 in terms of like what Marvel does on screen. Like, do they even do any of the cartoons that we do? You know, all those movies that Sam just went through that were done under other studios. Well, they're even if they're done, they're not done in that time frame. So it's like 1999, we're not getting X-Men. And 
we're not getting the Spider-Man after that, and we don't get that kind of like same progression. But if Marvel does get to a place by keeping their IP and by you know putting out figuring out how to do their own cartoons and all that stuff like that, let's say they do get to a place and they put out their own X-Men movie. Does that X-Men movie work better than the Brett Ratner ones, where he was just obsessed with putting everybody in black leather, which has been, I mean, just visually, I don't feel like they got X-Men right in the movies, because to me, the fact that it was a team and they weren't all wearing the same costume they kind of uniform. was the point. Yeah, they weren't in uniform. It wasn't like a, we're all this and we're all... T- I mean, yeah, there's the first class element of it where we got the big yellow ass X. And I get that. But that's not what people Ooh, are first going class, to an X-Men Damn movie. It, man. The man's yeah, name uh, is Darwin. Okay, go ahead. Continue. Well, I mean, even in the comics where it was like, you know, before Beast turned blue and all that stuff like that. Like, there's that element of it too. But then they grow up and they're like, I'm going to do my own thing. I got this Cyclops got his little sash and Wolverine is Wolverine and everybody is expressing their personalities. Like, do we get that? Which, then are we getting crossovers even earlier? Because in the Fox shows, I mean, Sony and Sony and Fox cross Spider-Man and X-Men over a few times in the cartoons. Yeah. So do we see that earlier? Do we see that? But then it's like, do we get Kevin Feige? I don't know where he's at in his career. Is he? We don't on the know level? if we get John Favreau. Right. We definitely don't get John Favreau because they're not having to do some. What's the movie he did? Corky's Swingers. Swingers. Sorry. He's. We're not getting a dude from Swingers to come in and make <laughs> and make our comic book movie. You know what I mean? Like, what is? What are his Hollywood credentials? Working. What are his he credentials? Didn't, didn't what does have, he know about comic books? So it's like, who do we? Who do we get to like? helm the mcu at that point maybe it is somebody it could be somebody good though you just like you never it's it it creates a it does create a lot of like what ifs it creates more it creates more what ifs by doing that which is interesting because you can't necessarily say whether it would be good or bad you would just know you probably ain't getting the iron man movie or straight out the gate and it probably is going to be a while before we see the Avengers. Like, it's probably going to be a while before, you know. They're going to slow burn that like, project. They, right. Like, they, they put the Avengers out there because it's like, this is the, these are the characters that we have to work with. And so we, you know what? we put it out there. I'll present it this way. If Marvel is actually able to hold on to Spider-Man, X-Men, and Fantastic Four... Why did they make an Marv- Why did they make an Iron Man movie first? They wouldn't. And they're, but they're like, just, you would literally just have from Civil War that, though. Properly done. <laughs> Eventually, but think about it. If you change the order of the movies, the MCU no longer exists. The moment because the only reason they sold those characters off is those were the characters people were trying to buy. Those were the most popular characters. Spider-Man has always been one of... Spider-Man is, in my opinion, the Marvel mascot. He is with... I think he is single-handedly... I think Spider-Man is bigger than Wolverine. I, he had Spider-Man merch anyway. By a lot. Wolverine, right. you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like... Yeah, I, search for it. You can't even sell Wolverine t-shirts to kids. So, so by that metric alone, there like, you go. The fact that he's on the boys' floor, the men's floor, the women's floor, like across the board. There you go. He's, he so is the Spider-Man, single mascot. Spider Man is the mascot of the MCU, if or not the MCU of Marvel as a whole. That is why their logo is the Marvel word and Spider Man coming down on top of it because he's their mascot. They only sell him off to Sony because they need those dollars. If they can afford to keep that, then what we end up with is a Spider-Man movie first. Marvel makes their own Spider-Man movie. Now, we have to just, we have to play devil's advocate here and do the whole like fast forwarding through the timeline kind of bit. Let's say that they make their movie and they make the same movie because it's a glitch in the matrix and we can make it just like we need to see it. 
let's say Tobey Maguire gets cast, Sam Raimi's the director, and Marvel puts out the Spider-Man movie starring Tobey Maguire. They make that movie. Do they go to the Fantastic Four? Or do they stick with Spider-Man and go right to Spider-Man 2 before they try anything else? Then, because they own Fantastic Four, does Marvel make a Fantastic Four movie? Do they go that route? Or do they move over to the X-Men? Now you're changing. Do they make them where they recognize each other also? Because like all these movies were being made and they all existed within the same time frame in the same city, but there was never any crossover. There was never mention of Spider-Man in the X-Men movies with different studios. Never mention of Fantastic so Four now and any I'm of that you, other stuff. I'm going to tell you exactly what happens. Now you have Marvel uh, director Avi Arid He's your new Kevin Feige or Kevin Feige. And you now don't have an MCU. You just have Marvel. That's what happens. And if you and go what's back, his name? Uh, Casada. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it becomes a whole different beast. So literally, I think if in fact you keep X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man under the Marvel umbrella and they don't sell it off in the fire cell in the beginning, you do not end up with the MCU. Or you Anything just end up with a different that at all, Will. I won't, even, I won't even say a different MCU. I think you do not end up with MCU. I think you end up with Marvel doing Marvel and just throwing pencils at the ceiling and seeing what sticks. Because that's literally... I think- that's what Ivy was well, doing at the time. That was how he was running I think, things. I, I, and I That's think, why but Marvel I think was that, almost bankrupt. I think that this is what this is what I think would happen. Eventually, people are going to want to tell the stories like Civil War that go across different comics. Somebody's going to have to figure out how to do that at some point. Now, maybe they don't go into Phase One with that as a plan like Kevin Feige did because Feige had the the he, blueprints to say he had the Spider-Man had the work vision depth yeah but the, that vision was informed by the fact that he already lived in a world where we've seen three Spider-Man, Spider-Man movies work to varying degrees of success we've seen an X-Men franchise work to varying degrees of success We've seen Fantastic Four fail, but people, you know, we can still, whatever. We can, still, like, we can still dissect that's kinda, it and see why it the, failed. Yeah, and that's kind of the one, too, where you're looking at it and you're just like, yeah, I get why this failed. Like, it's a bunch of scientists and, like, kids don't, I don't care about that. And But if you do, like, a phase one that's loosely termed a phase one where you're just like, all right, I'm going to just go through almost like what we've talked about DC should have done or what they're kind of doing now with like the one-offs and you just do a bunch of one-offs, see what people like, see what people gravitate to. Eventually you have to reboot Spider-Man. Like you're told me why gets too old. Like nobody wants to see middle-aged Peter Parker on screen. <laughs> like, let's just be real about that. Like in a comic book it's cool. He's growing up, but like you're not building your franchise but even then, he's building still your like cross always over. in great shape. So even middle-aged right. Spider-Man has like lost an arm, and he's a scientist working for right. I think it was it Baxter Industries. That's where right. we get uh, when they did the whole Spider Girl, his daughter spin off. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, but like what you would have is no, it's not good. <laughs> Which is I what think you, what you would have is that like you would still have in that same period of time where we got the one-offs. You would get those one-offs. But when they go in and they say, all right, we're ready to connect this. We're ready to make an MCU. You have to it just doesn't start with now. Iron Man. Yeah. It starts with Spider-Man. It probably starts with X-Men. You probably don't have them trying to like shove Inhumans down our throat because they weren't sure if they were going to be able to like get X-Men back. So they started trying to like get rid of the mutants in favor of the Inhumans and like the comic books to like gear us for Inhumans in the MCU. Which I mean, technically, I mean they're really just like just another type of like mutant in in theory. You know what I mean? You get less of that kind of filler. You know, maybe the maybe the Netflix shows aren't the Defenders, but it's a solo series for different X Men characters, and then they come together and make their own thing at the end. You know what I mean? I think like 
the I so think maybe it's our defender like, series is actually X Men, where we have the individual exactly. characters from the X Men, and they come together at Xavier School for Gifted, something like that. You okay. know what I mean? And I and I, I'm just pitching like potential because eventually, like the the whole thing about comics is the connectivity and the fact that they are happening in the same universe. Eventually, somebody is going to come in and be like we got to tell this civil war story and maybe this time because they have all the characters we can see spider-man take his mask off at the podium we can see you know the the true initial incident that sets off the mutant registration and the hero registration act we can see that big battle that we eventually saw in endgame but maybe that's actually in so civil war and maybe so and maybe civil war people. is actually run up against each other at the airport instead of having 10 people we can actually get all 30 cast members maybe we can maybe, do, we can maybe, do 15 civil, 15. maybe civil war <laughs> maybe civil war is a little bit further into the future because we have because we're doing spider-man and x-men eventually we'll have to work avengers in there somehow because they're prominently involved in like this story that we're trying to like work ourselves up to but Avengers is not the like thing we're working ourselves up to like it was in like the original phase one when they were just working with what they had. And maybe we don't get a Thor solo movie early. Maybe we don't get, you know, I don't think we, I mean, I think we could get an Iron Man movie early because I think just because of what he does and who he is as a character, but maybe they don't bother with like Captain America, the first Avenger they just skip right to like Cap coming out of the ice. Show me a couple flashbacks, but he's in like modern day. Maybe that's the story of the first Avengers movie, but the first Avengers movie isn't like this tentpole franchise thing that we see it as now, because actually the tentpoles are Spider-Man, X-Men, Hulk. Actually, to that point, if we have a if we have an MCU that's structured completely different and we bypass some of the movies in favor of other movies and we have pre-established characters and we skip the Thor individual movie and we skip the Cap individual movie, we get the Iron Man individual movie and we're not really rushing towards Avengers, but we're trying to get to the Avengers movie a little different. We have some other pre-established stuff. Perhaps maybe we jump into the Avengers coming together to stop Hulk much like the Avengers came together for the first time to stop Hulk because right. Hulk was in fact the threat at the time. And even in the animated series, they took that route. And when they finally like defeated Hulk, they talked to, you know, Dr. Banner, da, 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 da. they, they talked him down and whatnot, but that sets it up entirely different. And since everybody that you've mentioned technically should have an Avengers membership card. You can still really do Avengers with whoever you want at this point. It can, it's not necessarily, right. we're not talking West coast Avengers or anything like that, but you still have a large enough roster at this point for the Avengers to be something other than what we think of as being the definitive Avengers, because per the comics, the original cast of the Avengers should already include Ant-Man and Wasp well before we get around to having Black Widow and Hawkeye. You know what I'm saying? Like Black Widow didn't come along yeah. until much, much later. But because they'd already introduced her in Iron Man and, you know what I'm saying, Scarlett Johansson was good to have on camera. <laughs> Just good to, have on, good to have on camera. They kept around and, you know what I'm saying, that they moved that route. So, okay, well, Jeff, you and I clearly, we have figured out this the comic relation to it. Let's get, let's get another take. And only because he looks so, so, so bored. And I want to bring him back in because he's on shot number, is that six? Or is that five? Five. 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 Okay. He's on number five. <laughs> I'm on drink three. Will, share with me your thoughts. On said subject, what what do you have? Is there anything you can contribute to this well, current discussion? Down shot number six. There it is. See, I knew. I, see, I saw him pour six. I thought he took it. I didn't know he just poured it. So, what you got, man? What you think? Like, how would they have done? 
what would what do you think they would have done differently if they had kept Spider Man, Fantastic Four, and X Men during the fire sale they had in the early nineties where they sold everybody off prior to us getting the Spider Man and X Men movies? How do you think that would have affected the MCU as a whole? That's your question summarized. I think that one of the I, th- I think one of the best ways to start it would be uh, kind of going in with the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man with that. Uh, you got to remember that, you know, Marvel's first family was the Fantastic Four and okay. Spider-Man was introduced through uh, Fantastic Four and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, come with it. what I would kind of do is I would kind of give that uh, I would kind of give that comic you know illusion i would give that to the nerds and the geeks and everybody who enjoyed that like i would make the fantastic four because it's just like with iron man they made iron man and stuff like that but you know a lot of people are more were more about cap than iron man like he was a bigger name and stuff during their run you know back in the day so right. but we didn't get cap until later so it was like i would do the fantastic you could do the fantastic four movie and then set up the illusion to spider-man easily and stuff like that. And now you got hype generated. And stuff like that. And then with that hype generated, stuff like that, now you can ramp up toy sales, comic sales, and other stuff involving Spider Man in preparation of that movie that everybody now knows is coming. So that's where I think that they should start it if they were, if they kept those particular. Why did, why did we keep him quiet? Preach, brother. Keep going. I like where you're going with this. Okay. It's going to make my job so much easier. You know what yeah, I'm saying? We're like, just doing like the little soft teases that get you right up to the you big old end. Okay. So people. You don't know how many restrictions they have around like Spider Man and who he can be shown with. Like, we are not allowed to make a shirt that has Spider Man and other members of the Avengers that says the word Avengers on it. He's wow. not allowed to be. A, he's not allowed to be. Unless it is like a special permission from an actual movie style guy, but even the comic stuff, like we're not so a, even like comic can't, accurate. Even even it has to say comic Marvel accurate. or something like that. It has to say Marvel because of Yo, the shout Sony out to Matt Idris for hooking us up with like some bomb ass shirts. And for those of you who are not aware, I'm not going to grab it. I have it off screen, but I actually have a pandemic face mask made by Mad Engine. It is basic as hell. Nothing is on it. But shout out to Mad Engine for keeping us safe. And that's my homie right there. He did that. And shout out to them for keeping me paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so I, that's I mean, that's crazy that licensing is still in place with that. I mean, yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. Not anytime soon. So with that because everything is still separate. Ne- 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 everything is not under one big umbrella anymore. It's, it's divided and stuff like that. So you got to kind of see where it's going to land. And that's why they got all these restrictions. Because I guarantee you, they could come up with a whole lot more, you know, awesome-ass sh- shit if they had more free range. Because they got to play. We've them. had to, actually, we're not allowed to show X-Men characters with MCU characters, even in comic book form as well. We actually got into a lot of trouble because there's like a Secret Wars cover. And they were like, you got to take the X-Men characters out. And we did. And people were just like, what is this garbage? This isn't the... And it's just like, it's a shirt we've been selling for years and years and years and years. And then once the money got big and they started like making their play for Fox, they couldn't... It was just like, that's one of the rules. So even now that it's back under the umbrella, because it hasn't been introduced in the MCU, X-Men and MCU characters are still separate. separate. Minus... Minus uh, Scarlet Witch, just because she has that kind of duality. But she has that yeah, duality. It's... But I imagine it's what costume she's in, as far as her duality. Nope, it's nope. just Scarlet really? Witch is an Avenger. Well, if she got I mean, we can, no, we can show her. We can show her with both. Okay, but it's like I, would, I would imagine the separate. big crimson helmet would be clear that that is comic, and therefore mutant related as opposed to street clothes. Well, we can show her with vision. She can get shown. Because you remember, they retconned the whole mutant thing out. She's not a mutant yeah. anymore. Right. Okay. She's She's no, and and I, get th- I get that. Inhuman, but... if you follow the movie logic. 
Yeah. You know what? I didn't watch Inhumans. I'm not even going to front. I'm not going to lie. Well, her powers, her her and Quicksilver's powers were activated by the Tesseract. Right. Which okay. is and that that and that comes that's, from. That's I got you. I got from you. From Inhumans. Yeah. It's big on Agents of Shield. I got you. <laughs> Agents of Shield was a very good show. I enjoyed it. I mean, it, it it makes a lot of sense for them to you know play with what they know and so that because you could actually uh, I think they were brought Namor in and stuff like that. Ooh. Then uh, as one of the first villains, it made sense and stuff like that. And then you kind of run it that way. And now we kind of you you bring in people who are they know the comics and stuff like that. And then from there you can kind of spread out and you know really make it your own. However you want to run the universe because you don't have to follow the exact same storyline, but you can kind of just spread it out. And, Go whichever direction you need to go. I think that I think that one of those unintended benefits of it being separate is that sometimes less options is better. Yeah. Like when you can do everything, sometimes people try to do everything. And it's like yeah, just because you it's can do everything line, you're kinda doesn't guided. mean you should do everything. It's but like I bumping. do think there's like a couple there's a couple areas where they were just like, oh, we really want to do this, but we can't. So what's our workaround? And it's like your workaround is like in humans. Like, luckily, you have a very popular character in Miss Marvel who is an inhuman, who they're doing the show about her on Disney Plus coming up. But yeah. it's like, you probably don't really see. Any I think that is the only purpose. Until that way, they... way, way later. Okay, I'm catch myself. I don't want to go into a tie right here, but I think Miss Marvel, it's funny you say that. That is the only purpose that they have pushed this Avengers video game was to push the narrative of Miss Marvel further to try to reach more people so that when they release the show, they have that automatic tie in. And there's going to be a surge in the video game a little later. Maybe not because we have ripped that game to shreds and they have yet to fix what needs to be fixed for it. But it's funny you when you mentioned Miss Marvel because for a very long time, up until the release of the game, if you said Miss Marvel, I still did not think of Kamala Khan. That is not where my mind went. I knew the difference between Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel. There's never been a mistake there, simply because of Civil War II. But the iconic character of the original Miss Marvel for them to, I won't say change that, but the way that they've altered that in the positive aspect of inclusion and all of the things that they've done with that and the way that her character's been written so very well and the 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 all the good that they're doing with that comic. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like pushing her forward the way that they have. I don't know how that fits in to a change in the MCU. Now, with the Inhumans, she's been the biggest push in that aspect of Inhumans because up until Miss Marvel, Inhumans was not something that I regularly thought about or considered when I talked about comics. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, honestly, let me tell you something. Everybody knew about the character Black Bolt. But it wasn't like we was just talking about this dude. He was just one of those like stupid OP characters that came up when you was having a versus discussion and you needed to pull out some heavy hitters. You could be like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? I got Black Bolt. What? You know what I'm saying? And that's how that kind of thing came down. And now that they're actually trying to make an Inhumans movie and we had the TV show and they had my man Joffrey from Game of Thrones. And it was just like I had to see nah, no more movie. He was in that. Um so okay, so the Inhumans when it was released, that was the show was a bit, at first it was supposed to be a movie and then it got turned into a show. Okay, so the the show I you're thinking it. about the Eternals. The Eternals, okay, okay, and that's Inhumans, the one that got all the Game of Thrones characters on it for the Eternals. Yes, Inhumans what ended up becoming the TV show. So when the TV show released, you know what I'm saying? It was like again the only real character I knew about was Black Bolt and the dog, and I don't even know the dog's name, but Black Bolt, Lockjaw, Lockjaw, that's it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, was, I mean, I was kind of thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? We lose Marvel Ultimate Alliance, the video game, and that was such a fantastic video game that helped open up the roster 
for characters that a lot of people didn't know. And when you had the first Marvel Ultimate Alliance, that focused on just like the character aspect. And Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 actually kind of borrowed from the Civil War storyline, which was pretty dope because knowing, you know, having read the comics from Civil War and being able to see a part of it play out in this video game that I'm playing and the choices that I make, that was that was actually really, really cool. So, I don't, man, Brent, damn, that's a... That's a good one. I mean, bro. I think Miss Marvel, I That's think though Miss Marvel still fits, right? Because Miss Marvel was created after the MCU was already gone. Right. So if we're in a world where, you know, Marvel owns the rights to all of their characters, then Miss Marvel just becomes a mutant. Simple and mm. she She's di- well, because all of the then, stuff, all the stuff no, no, no. that because Miss no, no, no. Marvel the comic. Even then, the whole aspect of Inhumans takes place in the comics. The Terrigen Mist, all of that takes place in the comics. That has nothing to do. No, with I know, the separation no, no, no. Of I know that in Inhuman. I'm just, I'm just talking about in terms of like when you walk in and pitch this character to create this comic book, you're okay. not going to pitch Miss Marvel as an Inhuman. You would pitch her as a mutant. Now. You might they even if they don't pitch even if they didn't originally pitch Miss Marvel as an inhuman, I'm sure somebody was like, "Look, we're trying to like sway away from the mutant thing for a little while. Can we make <laughs> her like, can we make her an inhuman and use Miss Marvel as like an introduction to like inhumans in the comic book? Because in the comic book, that is kind of like where you start seeing and like learning about like what the inhumans are." I mean, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. goes into a lot of it, too, which is why I know more about it than, like, reading comics. I've never read, like, an Inhuman comic book. I ain't never read Medusa or Black Bolt or Lockjaw, none of that. No, no, no. But if you read, I um, think if you... For those listening or watching, if you read Civil War Two, they do a very good cover of how the Inhuman aspect and the Terrigen missed and all of that and how it relates to the characters and of course you can also follow all of the Miss Marvel series if you can go back and you can get Miss Marvel 1 yeah. that covers it in depth continue yeah Sorry. if you so if you take like Miss Marvel 1 and instead of her getting hit with the Terrigen Miss she's just a teenager something happens her embiggen powers activate or her shape shifting powers she activate, freaks out she gets and she scared. turns in she turns in the yeah you could do that, but she's still just a mutant. And now, because all of the things that are core to her character are not actually things that are 100% tied to her being an inhuman. She's still a Pakistani true. American Muslim teenager living in New Jersey. She's still like trying to hide her powers in her life as like a superhero. She's still like a super Marvel fangirl and fangirling out over all the characters. But She's just a mutant who doesn't go to Xavier's school of gifted whatever. Now, maybe instead of her developing a, real, a friendship and relationship or whatever with Miles Morales, maybe there are issues where she's at Xavier's school for gifted children and we see her interacting with the X-Men. Maybe we get stories where she's deciding between becoming an Avenger or an X-Men, et cetera, et cetera. But because of you know them trying to kind of stay away from the mutant stuff, it, it makes it, a lot of decisions are made for the character and for the franchise that are outside of its hands. And I think I don't think you lose any of that. So if Miss Marvel is just an if is Miss Marvel is just a a mutant who's a super like superhero fangirl, maybe that X maybe that Avengers game is. Still an Avengers game, but there's she's finding Wolverine and she's finding other Fantastic Four characters and not just like the core movie characters. Other, so other people with I Avengers think she still fits. Cards. Yeah, I think she still <laughs> fits and I think it still makes sense, but you just don't have to like spend any time talking about like what in humans are because she's a mutant and we already know what that is. I got which you. is essentially the essentially it's the same thing. It's just different means. Of getting it. Use a different word to describe the same damn thing. I mean, it's it's like the minutia, minutia detail. Yeah, right. But um, while we did mention the Avengers game that we did plug on our YouTube page, and we 
ripped to literal shreds, 94% of the original players no longer play that game. Just want to get that out there. That Doesn't is how bad the game is. Doesn't surprise me. Square Enix took a massive loss. Yeah. And yeah. they released a mobile game on a console platform. All right. Who else has a <laughs> one-on-one? Actually, like I'm to curious to see what Jeff had because he already had an idea for his one-on-one. Okay, mine is. And this is. I would have. This was the MC. Give us the premise for your one-on-one and what you're changing. My one. My MCU one on one is instead of Peter Parker, I would have just introduced Miles Morales as Spider Man in Civil War. And I get it. Everybody wants Peter Parker. Everybody, you know, he's like you said, he's the mascot for the company. However, I feel like due to licensing reasons, this is why I'm suggesting that because. I think that they, because Miles Morales was technically created after like all those deals were signed, all the characters they create belong to like Marvel. And so they could have used Miles in the MCU, I believe they could have. And I think that if they weren't going to sign the deal with Sony, that was going to be the plan. The plan was always to have a Spider Man in Civil War, but if they couldn't get Peter Parker through Sony, they would have put Miles in there. And for me, I look at it like this. You do, you introduce Miles Morales in that movie the same exact way you introduce Peter Parker. Like, we don't, like, we don't have no, like, maybe, and maybe it's a world where, like, a Spider-Man did exist and it was, like, kind of the same thing and Miles is, like, the new kid and Tony finds him, yada, 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 because... In the Miles Morales comic book, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but we all know what happens to Peter Parker in Miles Morales' universe. And maybe we introduce Miles in Avengers, but then the first Spider-Man movie, that can be that can be Miles' origin story. And that can then we show what happened to Peter Parker and why he's not Spider-Man in the MCU. And we move forward. Because the biggest thing for me is. I'm trying to just avoid all this like, well, is he going to be in the movie or again, who's going to like, I don't care. Like, I just want to make sure that once we introduce Spider-Man, it's a character that we know is going to show up in the movies. And that makes sense Two, with the success of into the spider verse. It proves that people will go see a miles movie. He is an interesting character. I personally find him far more interesting and fascinating than Peter Parker. I can connect with him. Three, we get some more melanin on the team and not from a made up country where it holds all the ideals of what we could have been without colonialism, like a real person living in real stuff from New York city. You know what I mean? And I think that would be my change. And I don't think it would have had major, major ripple effects throughout like the entire MCU because all the stuff that you've done with Peter Parker, you could do with Miles Morales just as easily. So, just take Brent that. has his hand up. <laughs> Go ahead, Brent, because I'm gonna ponder this for a second because I got thoughts. I was gonna say I've, I've had my hand up for the longest. What I will say is Miles Morales is a more interesting character than Peter Parker. Agreed. I don't I don't care what color you have under the mask. Spider Man is Spider Man. Spider-Man's always been that dude. I like Morales' backstory much more than I like Peter Parker's. What could happen, though, if we did do this change, say, Spider-Man's not well-received. If Miles doesn't get well-received, there's no clamoring for Into the Spider-Verse. Part of the MCU takes a hit. And then the backlash will keep on coming where they will be like, you know what? We jumped the gun too soon on this. The other part, though, is if, say, this fucking sells like people want it right now. If this goes amazing, not only would you have Spider-Man 1A and Peter Parker as a mascot, you get Spider-Man 1B mascot, Miles Morales. You have two guys that you can just sell the absolute ever-loving crap out of their merchandise. And you have as cornerstones of your franchise. Like, you've got it made at that point because... 
you have Peter Parker and Miles Morales. They can both do their own separate things. You could have separate TV shows for each. You could have separate video games for I, each, like we have I now. Can, um, and it sells phenomenally. So it's. I can almost guarantee that Miles Morales would be a success because, I mean, even though we don't have this hindsight at the time, look at Black Panther. I was about to say, if you just now, look at the success of think, Black Panther. Like, like, people went to see Black Panther who ain't know nothing about Black Panther. Who I didn't know. Don't even know that all the books all, you, don't even, you, you, don't, you don't even have to make a trailer for, like, you can literally just run ad space on, like, YouTube channels that black people watch like 85 South show and stuff and just put up a screen that's like black Spider-Man coming y'all <laughs> they gonna show we gonna show up logic did a whole and song this, called black Spider-Man so I, I I I think like you would you would probably have a hard time convincing the studio and I think that's the biggest thing and that's the thing that's the reason why they ended up doing the joint deal with Sony to get it done because I think you know the big wigs, they're not necessarily like down. The generals don't necessarily know what the troops in the trenches need all the time. And so they're making a they're making a general decision where it's like, yo, Spider-Man is Peter Parker. And if we're gonna show Spider-Man for the first time in the MCU, it needs to be Peter Parker. But people don't like uh, like the average person, like we've talked about before, these movies aren't just made for comic book fans; they're made for the average person too. The average person, like if you ain't never seen, like if you're like 15 years old, you might you probably never seen the Tobey Maguire Spider Man. No. Maybe you've seen the Andrew Garfield Spider Man. So Spider Man isn't like, that. yeah, maybe Spider Man isn't Spider Man XD, like, or maybe you've seen Spider Man on Disney XD, and you already right. know that Miles Morales exists. So if you see him yeah. take front and center, you're okay with that because it's an established character that you already know. That's and that's very. If you want to bring in, and if you want to bring in Peter Parker, even after like we show the like what happens to him in the like the Miles Morales solo movie interdimensional stuff just bring in peter parker from I mean, some other Mysterio was talking marvel about. Earth. that whole little conversation exactly. they had when parker was talking with mysterio and he was like oh my god so that means you know that means multiverse actually exists and so that you know like i thought it was just a theory in quantum mechanics and everybody just standing there looking at him while he completely geeks out you know what i'm saying and i'm sitting there the whole time thinking bruh we about to get a whole multiverse in the mcu like technically this movie released by Sony is an MCU tie-in, which means that whatever happens in this movie is canon for the MCU. So yep. the fact that these two are connected means that if there's multiverses, that's how we can do a real quick, simple introduction to mutants. Mutants exist on this planet, not that planet. All you have to have is some kind of event that causes multiverses to collide and now this universe and this universe become a single universe. Voila. I say that's super, super simple for me, but I'm a DC fan and that's like all that ever happens in DC. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so to me, it's like so simple. Like, oh yeah, like just pull the anti-monitor, problem solved. Now you got mutants. But I think that that is, that is definitely... So if you make that one change, if you make Miles Morales the Spider-Man that's introduced. The only thing you have to do differently in order to do that is you have to drop in a couple of Easter eggs, which technically in Iron Man 2, you have a Spider-Man Easter egg because the kid has on a, he has on the little mask. He, now he's wearing an Iron Man mask. And we understand later that's supposed to be Peter Parker. We've also, like, Reddit has already proven that timeline doesn't work. But okay, cool, whatever. You put that kid in a Spider-Man mask right there. Boom. Easter egg. That means Spider-Man exists in that universe. You don't have to establish the character because the character is already well known. You don't have to go into any backstory. You don't even have to introduce a movie at that point. All you have to do is say that he exists. People know Spider-Man. Then... When you get to the airport and he leans back and he yells, Underoos, and Miles Morales jumps out instead of like, 
hi everybody what's up dog like you know what i'm saying the theater explodes right. right because we recognize for that without seeing a single thing without releasing anything we already know what's up under the mask pretty much and that right there solidifies well, well we would Spider-Man. know before anyway because tony stark goes we see him before like when tony stark's like in his room and then he hits the like ceiling tile and the costume like costume. falls down yeah you just remove that scene and go right to the sam scene i feel like it would sell better that way just a cold just ta-da oh shit and it's only just, be and only because you know what I'm saying? like you, you maybe do that part in a flashback when you get to the first spider-man movie Mm-hmm. So if we're still in Civil War, Spider-Man has not been introduced yet. We're just trying to like bring him in for the first time and he comes right there. Now, if you choose to do that scene where he's talking to Peter, or I guess in this case, he's talking to Miles in his room. First of all, seeing Tony Stark in Harlem, that's going to like clue everybody in as to what's about to happen. Because it's real easy to make it clear that Tony Stark is in Harlem. But Tony plays it cool because, you know, it's just Harlem. He's not that kind of guy. It's no big deal. He goes, he does what he does. He gets to having a conversation. You have him talk with Miles. He boom, boom, boom. He knocks it down. At this point, you establish the death. Well, spoiler, if I didn't just then. But at this point, (laughs) (laughs) at this point, you know what? Wherever we post this, we'll make sure to put a spoiler alert tag on it because obviously it's there. But since we are introducing Miles Morales at this point and Tony Stark is going to talk with Miles, he could at that point, we don't even have to do a Chekhov's gun. We could actually just lay it out and explain it right there. He could be like, so this is what you're doing, huh? You stopping a couple of bank robberies, catching a couple of purse snatchers, you know, and and excuse me for like, I've had a couple of drinks, so in my mind, I'm not doing a Robert Downey Jr. impression, but I feel like I'm doing a Robert Downey Jr. impression. I don't mean to. But he's having a conversation with Miles, and he's like, you know, so that's what you do. You stop a couple of bank robberies. You stop a couple of purse snatchers. You know what I'm saying? And then he's like, you know what? I knew the real Spider-Man. You know what I'm saying? He was a good guy. He was a guy who was all about the neighborhood. He was all about the people, blah, 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 blah. But he's gone. And you're here. And you want to fill those shoes? Those are big shoes to fill. But I'm going to help you fill them. Woo, 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 woo. Now you have a mentor, mentee. You still get to put Iron Man in all of the other movies. You get Miles Morales with a little bit more of an upgrade. He gets some actual training so he can learn the ropes that he needs to learn. That's fantastic for the MCU. You just like wrangled in an audience that you made. You had half that audience, but now you brought them all in the way D, you know, the way you did with Black Panther. And, auto save people, they showing up now. And in this phase, now that like all the main guys are gone, and once Kamala gets her show, now you have all new, all different Avengers. And you have a young cast for, that you can run yes. for a little while. Except for Iron Man, for obvious reasons. But just make make him like the AI in the new Avengers Tower or something like that. But you got Ironheart but, coming. Yeah. How do you not, eventually at this point now think about it? Now you're talking about. I see a different. This is not Kevin Feige's MCU. I see. I see somebody else sitting up top here. But now you've got a Miles Morales cinematic established Spider Man. You've got Kamala Khan moving forward, Disney Plus. She was like the main feature in the game. Probably one of the few highlights in the game was her character. And it's just like she was just. And so- she was a big character on the Disney X, the last season of the Disney XD um, Avengers show, too. She's been like super prominently featured in that as well. Okay. And the Marvel Rising like miniseries things they've been doing, too. So. She's Not everywhere. to mention her comic is actually doing really well on its own. So let's shout out to Kamala Khan for that. Even though she's a fictional character, we still give her a shout out. Um, so you've got all of that in place. When you look at like Luke Cage and uh, 
Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Jessica Luke Cage Jones. and Jessica Jones. Their daughter eventually ends up becoming the new Captain America. She's the shield by herself because she's like bulletproof and stupid strong and wearing the costume. You you know what? If you do make that one change with Miles Morales, you open up the door to possibility much, much, much faster because you start diversifying the MCU earlier. But do we anticipate these being cinematic or do we anticipate? Because see, that's another thing. When they introduced Parker in Civil War, they did not know that they were going to have a streaming service months later or years later. And so I don't know that they built that. But, okay, so here's what you do. Here's what you do. They did not set Introduce that up. Miles. Introduce Miles cinematically. And he's in the Kamala show. So he's like her mentor, even though he's like, they're like close to the same age, but I think for like purposes, let's say he's like a senior, she's like a, a sophomore in high school. You know what I mean? And he's like, oh, you're obsessed with the Avengers? Like, you think it's all well, like I've been this to space that, and I'm an honorary you know I mean? Avenger because Tony Stark exactly. made the Avenger when we were on the ship headed out to wherever planet. Plus they have a lot of like really funny like interactions where like they're when they didn't know each other's like secret identities, their high schools would like go head to head at like science fairs and different things like that. And then all of a sudden Spider-Man and Ms. Marvel are there. And then they start like piecing it together that like every time they're like schools have a thing, they show up and then they can't find, you know what I mean? So I think like you can introduce him as kind of like a, a Almost kind of like how Hulk was in Ragnarok, where yeah, this is a Thor movie, but like we're gonna, we're gonna make this a two hander and throw this guy in there too, and you know you kind of keep it rolling like that, and maybe then he is the one who comes in in the next round of Avengers, like yo, you need to check out my homegirl, and then she comes in, and they're like, what's so special, and then she's like, in Biggin, and then everybody's like, holy crap, like. You know what I mean? Like, I think I, I, I agree with you. I think this like making that change is kind of like the same. It's kind of like the same like thing that I always say about Star Wars. Like, it's great to like have nostalgia and it's great to have like a heritage. But when you hold on to it too much and you start trying to make everything go back to that heritage, when you have like so many other like interesting and compelling things that you could like draw on and like focus on you end up like crippling yourself just just making like only safe choices like you have like i think putting black panther in civil war was like that was in their mind like a bold choice but for us we all know like how many like people of all colors but especially of you know the highly melanated shades <laughs> were waiting to see people who looked like us on screen in these movies and not just like Nick Fury behind the scenes calling the shots, but actually like beating ass and like going to work and like, you know, that fight scene when he's like beating, he beat, like our introduction to Black Panther is him beating the shit out of Captain America and Winter Soldier like at the same time and out running and race. You know what I mean? Like that is, out, like people like, People walked away from Civil War very excited about Spider-Man, and understandably so, but I saw people like, greatest introduction. I was like, yo, I'm sorry. Underoos and doing a backflip and taking Cap Shield with their web is not better than a rooftop fight scene that turns into like a tunnel car chase scene. Like, At 50 it's miles an not, hour plus. Yeah. Like, they was it's just, it's just not. It's just not better. And, and that was probably the best fight scene of that whole movie. Yeah. 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 And that's the movie with like the biggest, biggest fight scene we had seen to that point. So I think by like introducing Miles pushes, it just pushes everything like forward more and it pushes you towards like what you're trying to do, which is get your comics and your movies like 
kind of on the same page as opposed to like, now we're putting in this guy. And so how long are we going to be? So now we got like Donald Glover, like my nephew lives in this neighborhood. I don't want these guns on the street. So it's like, okay, so now how long do we have to wait till we get Miles? Because you already gave us into the Spider-Verse and we know there's an appetite for him. So how long do we get Miles now? When you could have just been did this and into the Spider-Verse could have been something else. That could have been that could have been a story that wasn't even burdened by Miles figuring out who he is. Because if we already know who Miles is from the MCU, we can make that the story where he's now whatever this second movie is where maybe he goes to a different dim- dimension and he meets up with Spider-Gwen and we introduce Spider-Gwen that way and figure out how we get her into the MCU. And now you get your additional representation by having the female Spider-Man, having her be exactly. the main focus, let the Spider-Verse story, and even if you do Spider-Man Noir, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot you yeah. can do with that aspect of it. And a lot of that. Plus, I am, plus, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, um, I, I, I like Zendaya to have one black boyfriend in a movie. <laughs> like, no, like, she was very, like, good in particular about, like, having, uh, like, young men of color cast against her in KC Undercover. But it's just like when you go to Hollywood, you don't have that yeah. kind of pull. I get it. And it's like, I know she's multiracial and I know she's, like, considered, like, traditionally beautiful by all races. But you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, you know, let's. I, I, I get what you're saying without saying it, so let me just spell it out for those who may not. Because she is mixed, she is probably not considered white. And that being the case, it makes more sense in terms of the on-screen chemistry that she be with Miles as opposed to Parker. And Zendaya... I actually think that the Zendaya and Miles Morales concept like that by itself fits really well. She could actually she and, and even if she's not MJ, if she's somebody different. Now, I will say I mean, I was, Peter clearly has the fever. I was surprised. Wait, I was just about to say I was surprised by how <laughs> well said it other than me. Thank you. He got a type. <laughs> I was surprised how well it worked. On screen, but I think a lot of that had to do with looking at Homecoming, and it was like, "Wait, who you taking to Homecoming, dog?" You know, you know what it is. It's because he's British. Okay, see, over there, they don't have like they have okay. like some of that, but they don't have it like how we got it over. They don't here. have the same hangups. So like he's a he like like I don't know if you guys have ever seen him like dance. But he can like, he can literally not, actually he, dance. He, he so, can dance and he can dance. Like he'll go down I'm the soul train line. And at he this point, like, oh, if okay. anybody has not seen, what's the show with uh, Lip Sync Battle? Lip Sync Battle. If you have not seen Tom Holland and Zendaya on Lip Sync Battle at this point, are you even on the internet? Are right. you even online? Probably not. Get your life. Like you need to be online because it's there. And that was like the only thing that was shown for a little while, especially like right around the time of the movies coming out and everything with Spider Man. Like, come on, man. Come on. All right. So, Sam or Will, I think we got time for at least one more. Anybody got anything? I know you all got it. I do a good bit of talking whenever anyone has anything to say. So, I would, I would put it to Will so we don't put him to sleep. No, my mom was just thinking about everything that's just being said. And to be honest, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with introducing my early. <laughs> Ooh. So, okay. Ooh. I need a Let's refill go. on this hot take. No, 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 no. So you don't think Miles Morales would fit in? I, I don't agree with it going early so with that because I think there's plenty of, of room for him to come in now, actually, and so with that, with the, how they're doing everything with the multiverse. <clears throat> because you think about it like this. If Doctor Strange is doing the multiverse, you see him and Spider Man have already had a little, you know, a little back and forth and stuff like that. Oh, this we're using our made up names. <laughs> yeah, this allows you a perfect opportunity and stuff to bring in, i.e., you know, Andrew Garfield or Toby Maguire. I would say Toby, uh, so that because he is the 
oldest of the Spider-Man, so with that. Fingers you know, crossed that that is actually going to turn into something and not just be like a Google algorithm. That to spawn the Miles Morales and stuff like that. Because you got to think about how everything has been set up and how everything has been alluded to. Everything's been set up, and they can they can literally do the can champions. Give me a small refill. And stuff like that. Like, no problem. You've already freaking got Margaret uh, Cho, and stuff like that, whose son is Amadeus Cho, who is Braun, the Hulkling type, you know, Guy, whatever the case may be. Nova's already been alluded to back in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, so that who's also part of the champions and stuff like that. You've got um again, freaking Miles Morales has been alluded to. So he's there. Miss Marvel's on the way and stuff like that. And Ironheart and stuff like that is possible to show up because they already did the AI Tony Stark, which is a big part of Ironheart's story, and how having the search for search for Tony Hark uh for Tony Stark and become Iron Heart and stuff like that. What about because Iron Lad? AI was a part of that. What about Iron Lad? Because he was the one who actually made the cameo and they brought him in. That's the other thing with Iron Lad, so that, that freaking which Iron Lad, who's supposed to be the enemy for the next part of the MCU? Who's rumored to be the enemy? Uh King, King, King Conqueror. Conqueror. Who King is Conqueror. who? Iron Lad. They're the same person. So you see how it, it rolls itself together and stuff like that. And you can literally pull the whole story together and stuff like that. And then start, you can split hairs all day and stuff like that. But it just depends on how they're going to take it from this point on. But it's a perfect time to bring in. You'll have Kamala. You'll have Miles. You can have, you know, uh, Ironheart probably a little bit down the line because she's a post-champions character. So that. But you got, with having those two, Miles Morales, Kamala Khan, and uh, Amadeus Cho, that's three people who are not of the traditional, you know, white senses with that, that are there and now a big part of the champions and stuff going forward. And then whatever Nova can be, you know, Nova's a traditionally white character. So, that. so man, now you've got four of the champions. The majority of the team is this. And you can kind of run with it, however, with Captain Marvel and Doctor Strange kind of leading the helm right now because most of the other big guys are – retiring and they're already done so i mean you've got options of stuff to go forward right now and stuff like that but i like the way that the mcu was done i don't want to change necessarily anything which is technically my one-on-one there's nothing i would really change because i think we learned from a lot of mistakes that were made and i think someone you take someone like you know ryan coogler as he finishes doing what he's doing he's doing a good job i really like what he's doing and stuff like that and if kevin feige ever decides to take a step down hey he may elevate and to a position up there so that it helped kind of keep things on track with how things are going, where there's more inclusion. You're not eliminating, you know, the, you know, these characters so that, but you're just bringing in more people of color so that, and you're making it more diverse. I want to have a nice mix of everybody. I don't, I don't want to just see black and white and whatever. So like, no, give me everything. I want Hispanic. I want Asian. I want everything because it's going to be that much more fun and stuff for me to see how the different, cultures interact with that I want to, it brings people together so we're we did and i got miles morales along with you know amadeus cho sitting here with nova stuff like that and i got my friends who's asian and you know black and white and everybody sitting next to us and stuff like that it's like everybody's involved everybody's got some stake in it so like that it, it hopefully brings more people together just in general to what the mcu has to offer so and I like it because it gives Peter Parker, because everybody wants Peter Parker. And so don't get me wrong, I'm a little bit partial to Peter Parker because of my name. So, but at the same time, I like it that they were able to give him his, his thing, but we can go ahead and finish out his story and let him go. And now you can bring in Miles, who you can bring in a younger actor, and stuff like that, and really stretch that for another couple of movies and stuff as well. And so that if you want to you know, stretch out to the different multiverse, and that's the reason I put it, if you do it with a different multiverse, like you were saying, Sam, the X-Men could exist in that multiverse along with the champions. Uh, maybe there are no Avengers and stuff like that in that multiverse. So it's the champions and the X-Men or whatever on this this Earth 617 or whatever the case may be. There's like 12 different ways you can take this. There's more, I'm sure. But again, we're just spitballing off the hip here. So with that, and I'm going off everything that you and Jeff have been saying about it, like. I think that it's it's fine that they waited and stuff like that, and they gave those illusions because it also builds the hype for me. And I think with Black Panther and Spider Verse doing as well as they did and stuff like that, now is one of the best times to do it because now everybody's more focused and on board with, hey, that was an awesome movie. What else you got? What else can you bring to the table? 
because more or less they just did the whole trial run to see if there was a market and by god there was not only a market but the movies were exceptional on their own even if you weren't trying to create like a niche market yeah, I mean, I, I think they did very well with so that. So I think they have the formula. I think they're doing well with the formula so far and stuff like that. Uh, and I don't think that, again, you know, you got to remember, because there's always going to be people saying that, oh, this is being thrown down our throats, or this is what it is. We got too many, you know, black characters, too many freaking lesbian characters, too many whatever, too many LGBT, like, shut the fuck up. Like, we got too many white care. characters. Just call like, it what it is. I don't care what, like, again, all of this has been predominantly, you know, white occasion until then, so, like that. so the fact that we're kind of spreading it out and stuff like that is fine with me like you get to have you know you, you got your white captain america now we got the black captain america so like that cool so like that certain characters you can't change which we had a conversation about this in grown eight geeks so like that but you know certain characters like storm and you know black panther stuff can't be changed particularly because of their that's rich who the character is. is yeah that's who the character is with so like that but when you change when you have something that's a mantle that can be changed with so like that now you can start experimenting and swap which you've already done it in the comics let's just bring it to the big screen now and kind of spread it out and see where we can go with it so that's just kind of where i'm at on it so that uh i i don't like i i like some of the stuff that y'all are saying with you know, like the, you know, flip in and set the under the, you know, what's up and stuff going on. Definitely would be fun. Definitely would still get some hype and stuff like that. I wouldn't doubt it. It would get a lot of freaking hype. Definitely more hype for Miles Morales flipping in than it would when Spider-Man flipped in. I believe that, you know, 100%. But oh, no, it, that whole theater. Everyone different hype theater from different right communities. <laughs> yeah, it was like hype so that, but I, I just think that with the way that everything is going right now, so like that, people are, uh, a lot of people who weren't and so that we're becoming more tolerable and stuff like that. And then we got certain people in certain positions in real life that kind of throw some things for a loop. We're not going to go too far into that. But um, I really think that now is the time to really let them expand their market and stuff like that with, again, Kamala, Miles, you know, like Shane Cheese coming out and stuff like that and whatever else is like that. Like they're really about to just kind of run the gambit here and stuff like that. And that's why I say with some of the surprise casting, like um, Gemma, uh, I can't remember her whole name, Gemma, Chan, Gemma something. She was Minerva. And now she's also in the Eternals and stuff like that. She's also an Eternal or something. So it's like... Art Artemis? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out where they're going with some of this and stuff like that because it's like you're feeling... You're filling spots with people and stuff like that. Just make sure that you're picking the right people to fill the spots. Because also, as much as I uh, I want to make sure there's no talent plays a factor and stuff like that. You got to be able to play the role and stuff like that. So I don't want somebody just getting the role because there's somebody of color and stuff like that, but they can't do that role justice. Like I want to make sure that everybody who's being picked is uh, everything is being done carefully by whoever's doing the casting because casting has been great so far. So that I haven't had a problem with any of the casting so far. So with that, keep up the good work. And so with that, but just make sure that you're looking everywhere instead of just here for casting. So that's my take on it. Okay. Okay. I I have to say that um, definitely a hot take, and you know what? I guess I can accept that. Moving Miles Morales to a later point in the story still works. And moving into phase four, if we keep phase four and we go with Kang the Conqueror as the the big bad for phase four, then that works out perfectly, especially for... Okay, first off, just to establish what we're talking about for those of you who may not follow comics as closely, and I forget sometimes like just how good you are, Will, when it comes to anything Iron Man and comics and shit. Now you 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 caught me with my what with my head. I was I was slipping just then, and you got me with the Iron Lad bit. So kudos to you for that, because King the Conqueror, Iron Lad, like you just shut me all the way up. I just want to give you that shout out right there. <laughs> but so. OK, so for those of you who are trying to figure out exactly what the hell I'm talking about, 
when you watch the funeral scene at the end of Endgame and you see everything that's taking place right there, there is the one young man who was from that was Iron Man two, correct? Three. Yeah. Three. Uh, no, uh, three. Three. Okay, so that was the young man from Iron Man three. And he was the one, if you recall, the watch. He had the Hello Kitty watch, and that was so that young man when Tony's suit like powers down, he's just drifted, he ends up like crash landing somewhere. The kid that helped him had the potato gun. That kid. He makes a guest appearance in a cameo scene at the funeral for Tony Stark. So Everybody was kind of wondering. I mean, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of discussion as to why is he at the funeral. You know what I'm saying? Like, how did he get the invitation? Obviously, Stark remembered him because when he got back and he was established and everything was good again, he, like, completely rebuilt that garage. So, the idea being that that kid, and keep in mind cinematic liberties, but that kid would end up becoming Iron Lad. So, Iron Lad is a younger version of of a would-be Tony Stark. Like, he is pretty capable, and he is, he's the dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, Iron Lad is that guy. Now, what's crazy is Iron Lad happens to be Nate Richards. You hear that name? I'm going to say it again. Nate Richards. So, just when you hear the name Nate Richards, of course you hear Richards, so automatically you assume that that has something to do with the Fantastic Four and whatnot. And Iron Lad is one of the key members who is part of the Young Avengers, or the like, as Will was mentioned, like the storyline of the characters who come along later on. So another big thing. Spoiler alert for those of you who may see movies or watch comics or anything comic related. Iron Lad eventually becomes Kang the Conqueror and he masters time travel and the whole nine. And the biggest power that Kang the Conqueror has is time travel. So given that the Avengers just did all of this time travel with Endgame and Cap going back to return all the stones... There are some things that can't be undone by the returning of the stones because they took place. And every time something changes, a new timeline gets generated. So when Loki picked up the Tesseract and he disappeared, it doesn't matter if you return that stone, like that still happened. <laughs> He's got that. So there's different events that took place throughout, like uh, Captain America told Captain America that Bucky's alive and that's how he was able to beat himself in that battle. So that means that that Captain America from that time period knows earlier that Bucky's alive and therefore in that time period would be searching for Bucky sooner and whatnot. I mean, it's, it's a lot of little things like that. But Iron Lad being one of those characters that would be affected by the way things change in the timeline. So um, interesting idea that if Iron Lad was introduced in Endgame and he becomes Iron Lad, maybe you cast him as Kang in the future movie and that sets up. So bringing Miles in later. Yeah. I get, damn, I got to give, okay. All the pieces fit. Uh, like, it's like a damn puzzle. It sucks because both of them are right if you do it both the way that each of them it's say. Work way. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah like I, I, I feel like it's just a lot of like choices. Both are gonna work. <laughs> if you do it the way Jeff said, it works just fine. If you do it the way Will says, it works just fine. I feel like Will's description is the way that maybe they're going about it. It'd be the as easiest tie-in. No, no, no. As it is, like th- they could go about it the way he was suggesting based on what they've already done. Jeff was pointing out a 1v1. His one-on-one was this is the thing to change. And looking at it, that would have worked. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm good with either one. And both of them. Do you have a 1v1 or is that? I just like being a part of these conversations. Let's see, what would I change? You know what? Mine is very simple. I would introduce the Black Widow movie a hell of a lot earlier in the timeline 
so we don't have to wait for the movie. I want to know what happened in Budapest. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. I would have introduced... I, honestly, the only thing that I probably would have done different in the 1v1 based on Jeff's the 22 got movies... Based on the 22 movies of the MCU, the only thing that I probably would have changed because I like the way they did everything they did. I don't have any major gripes. I don't have any major complaints. I understand cinematic liberties and some of the limitations that they had as a result. We could not have the big epic battle. I got, you know what? I got my shot of Iron Man's repulsor blast being reflected by Cap Shield, which was the logo for Civil War. I got that. So I'm good with Civil War as a whole. Um, I understand the limitation they had on the number of characters that were involved. So the way they did it, I was really good with that. For the most part, there hasn't been very many misses in the MCU as a whole. Uh, Thor 2, Dark World. Eh. You could have removed that entirely. You could have, but it still introduced an Infinity Stone, and it gave us some background on Loki and gave us a little bit of his motivation. And we saw some important things that involved Loki that came up later. So, because they did use Thor two for the one where they the whole time loop thing, that was the movie that they chose to pick on. So technically, it was necessary. You could have removed Thor one if you'd gone that route and say it was absolutely essential to get to your end game moment. So. You know what I'm saying? The way they've kind of done everything as a whole, I'm okay overall with the setup of everything. But Natasha, having been such a big character in the end, the one thing I would change is I think she and Hawkeye should have gotten... I don't know that they each should have gotten their own movie, but I think you could have done a... Black Widow movie and had Hawkeye feature heavily in the movie and we could have gotten a flashback as just a little bit more as to who she is, what she is, why she is and it could have included the scene from Budapest. Yes, like I need to know what the hell happened in Budapest, but It's so funny that they like push the movie so far that it's probably going to end up on Disney Plus because if Disney Plus existed when they were making all this like to me a Black Widow Hawkeye Disney Plus show is like where I would have gone with it to like kind of give you that backstory and it's almost like a that like the one of those shows that have like yeah it's like one of those shows where it's like you're constantly like flashing back but also like in the present you're learning their history but they're doing like current missions that like still affect like the MCU, I think like that could have given a lot of insight and 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 what it does is it makes the scene where they're fighting to jump off the cliff in um, whichever in-game. movie that is in Endgame. In-game. It gives it more gravitas because we've we've gone on a ten episode at least mission with them. We've seen like what they mean to each other. Like and we know that. how hard and why that was so difficult for them. Yeah. And why each of why why neither one of them wanted to let the other be the one. Yeah. Because it's really hard for me to understand and believe that Hawkeye has a family. I mean it like But he's willing to sacrifice himself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Man. Where she has no one and like There's a deep I think it's because he doesn't think it's gonna work. <laughs> well, not only because he doesn't think it's gonna work, but also keep in mind that when he was out in the field, his entire family dusted. Yeah. So while he has a family, he doesn't have a family. You see what I'm saying? That's why he even went the whole route of Ronan and was like taking out Yakuza the way he was. You know what I'm saying? It was like, that wasn't on some, I got to do right. He was like putting a lot of red in his ledger. You know, and since they always talk about that ledger between the two, like we need their backstory their or time contact. with Shield, because all of their inside jokes that they keep telling, I need I need to know where that's coming from, and I think for me, those are the only two characters who did not get their time in the limelight. They they they've had their moments, but they've never really had the opportunity to shine the way they needed to to be a part of this team, and. I need to see that they deserve to be on this team. 
Are you are you looking to pay tribute? No, I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you are you offering yourself as tribute? No, I'm for the I, basically days? no. I no. I have I have my Go hand ahead. up. By all means, by all means. For four, those of you four. who weren't watching. Brent had his little I I present myself as tribute for the Hunger Games District 13. <laughs> Unintentionally, it was just comfortable as opposed to holding my whole hand up. I here, got you. Like I was go in ahead. high school. But go but, ahead. Uh, you, you can, what, what's up? For your 1v1, I will say I will only accept a Hawkeye and Black Widow movie if one of the Russo brothers is directing. Because those two, one of the two, anyway, knows how to do hand-to-hand combat movies exceptionally because he made Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Phenomenal movie. There's no superpowers. There's no magic. There's no this. There's no that. You turn very real-life situations into very, very watchable movies. One of the better MCU movies, in my opinion. And the second one is, if you did Black Widow too early... Knowing what we know now about the women's movement that came on, the women's empowerment movement that followed, would it have been received the same way now as it would have back then? Would that have been considered one of the forefront pinnacle movies for it? Or would it have been met with backlash as people were still trying to wrap their heads around for some reason women's equality? I I personally think that on one hand, like I believe 100% that Black Widow deserves like a solo movie or some sort of solo or project with Hawkeye, just because of the work that she put in in the MCU. You know, pretty yes, much every is. character has had like some sort of spotlight. And beyond Iron Man 2, when we really didn't know she was like Black Widow, she hasn't really been in anything. Oh, well, she's basically been like a sidekick. Iron Man 2. And then the Captain America, Captain America too. What and I think you. that she definitely deserved to have like an emphasis put on her. However, I do feel like it would be almost sacrilegious to get a Black Widow movie before a one the Wonder Woman movie came out, just because of name Rick, even though I know like it's like cross platform, but because of name recognition. Yeah, it's almost like you gotta. We, we got as, as a culturally we gotta. Me, we, okay. got, we can't skip steps. Wonder here. Woman goes before and, Black Widow. <laughs> and I think that I think that. I mean, but whose fault would that be my thing? Yeah, and and that's nobody and that's nobody's fault. But I think just in terms of like executives, if I'm an executive at a company and I'm like completely out of touch with like what people want and what women want, I'm like. I'll give you a Black Widow movie when I see a Wonder Woman movie come out and be successful. And I think that's like the hurdle they ran up against. And I think it like quasi makes sense in, in, in terms of like geek fandom and geekhood. Um, but I think like it does, I think making it a prequel, because if you don't make it a prequel, then you end up like not getting the mystery that you get in some of the other movies that follow it in the like movies timeline because you don't know what happened but they know what happened etc cetera, etc cetera. Sam, Sam. My, okay okay you said name recognition if I'm an executive at Marvel do I feel like Scarlett Johansson has more name recognition than Gal Gadot Yes, but the name of the movie isn't Scarlett Johansson. The name of the movie is Wonder Woman or Black Widow. So from a marketing standpoint, do I not have her name plastered right across the top, big as hell, Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson, Johansson as Black Widow? As Right, as Black Widow. Because have you done at that this point, for anybody else? At this point, but we're not talking about anybody Nick else. Nick Fury, well, Samuel L. Jackson is Nick Fury is the only other one that got But hold on. We're talking about Black Widow. Now, the question only becomes, and I got to do math. Like, damn, I don't want to do math. So y'all help me out with this because I don't want to try to figure this out. What movies had not come out at the time Wonder Woman came out? So Wonder Woman, um, Wonder Woman movie came out. 2015, 2016? 2017. So Wonder Woman came out in 2017. 
So we have to only look at MCU movies that had come out by 2017. So if we pull up an MCU timeline, Will, you got one handy? Or do you know offhand? Uh, not offhand. Okay. I'm not saying that to be funny. I just figured you may possibly nah, no, know. No, I do, but, you know. Let me see if I can just but, f- like, pull something. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I got it right here. I got it right here. MCU timeline. Du-du-du-du-du. See, Captain Marvel hadn't come out yet, so we're good there. List of cinematic Marvel Universe movies. Blah, 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 blah. I just need the whole thing as a whole. Okay, 2017. So at this point, we're in phase three. We have Civil War in May of 2016. Doctor Strange in November of 2016. Galaxy of the Guardians, May 5th, 2017. Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok was November 3rd, 2017. So basically, any movie prior to Thor Ragnarok. So when we go back to the release date of Wonder Woman... But I get what you're saying, Jeff. I do. I, I like and like you say, strong female of, superhero. Wonder, Wonder Woman is the first name that always comes to mind. It's no one else will because it's a, it's a, it's more of it's less of a it's a principal thing. And I exactly. will agree that if Black Widow gets a movie, but it's not like anybody at Marvel is picking up the phone, calling DC, saying, "Hey." Can y'all release a Wonder Woman movie? Because we have this bang, we got this bomb ass Black Widow script that we want to put out, but y'all haven't put out a Wonder Woman movie, and she's the more icon. That's that's not how that goes. You know what I'm Look, saying? It's it not, goes how, back it's to, not how it goes. But it goes it's back to what you were saying as far as the gonna... success. Somebody's waiting to see success. Let me see you do a movie with a female lead as a superhero and make it successful. Oh damn! Wonder Woman came out. We should have got Black Widow same year, or at least within a year or so. But the problem with that becomes the timeline of the story they're telling doesn't fit to shove her in. You can't just release a Black Widow movie where they're building a story, they're telling the story they the way they want to tell it. They've got the movies being released in the order they need to be released. Because as it stands right now, this Black Widow movie, if we get it, if we don't get it, doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. The only reason this Black Widow movie makes any difference is because she fucking deserves it. Not because it has any bearing on the MCU as a whole. She's proven herself. She showed up. She's been in place each time. So when I say that my one my one on one is putting her movie earlier, it is simply to establish that character, to establish Hawkeye earlier, to establish Black Widow earlier, to give those characters relevance to their arc, to their story inside the MCU. Because when we first saw her, she was just literally eye candy in an Iron Man movie. And when she was beating John Favreau's ass, it was kind of like, what the hell? And then towards the end of that movie, when she's like going through the hallway, like, what? Wait a minute. Yeah. What is happening right now? Who is this? Oh, that's Black Widow. You know what I'm saying? And it was like right after that, they should have went right into who the hell she is. No, they, they weren't gonna do but that. See, they can't put her ready in for Captain that. Marvel. I kind of, I kind of disagree with that though, to a little, to a little degree, because if her whole thing is about, like, I feel like it'd be disrespectful at that time because she's I just hot eye candy. Well, no, I feel like even for her character though, like her whole character is supposed to be, you know, covert ops agent. She's got all these secrets. We don't know who she's working for. We don't know what side she's on. You have to like let that mystery, I think, continue to play out until Cap Winter Soldier. Okay, so because, after, after Winter because Soldier, because if you, I, I can get if that. You, I accept that. If you 100%. do, in, if you give her a movie before she like testifies in front of Congress and is like, I got all these secrets. Here y'all go. If y'all had any questions about who I am or what I stand for or who I work for, it's all laid out right here. Like. 
if you give her a movie before that, it's kind of like, well, what is is is, she, is, she, is it just a Jason Bourne movie? I feel like doing it at the end, yes, making making this character wait feels wrong because everybody else got a movie. You know what I mean? It and it looks bad because all the at dudes at this point got it is movie literally just it. like it is Probably. being done simply. It's a token movie. Unless well, it has something for Phase Four, we don't know about. It's well, what I would say is it works. It works better though as a swan song for the character. It's like okay, because after, she after you met her end point, in Endgame, because she met her end in Endgame, to go back and give us a whole movie of who she was and maybe help us understand why she felt the need to be the one. If that's what they're doing, hell yeah, this movie can't get here fast enough. But if they are and that's simply, why I would, and, if they are and simply jumping why, like, in and doing this movie because, okay, well, Wonder Woman got a movie and that was in the DCU and she's been in like six movies, seven movies, and she ain't been, she ain't had like not one movie yet? Come on. That's not the same part, though. Yeah, you can't put it's them the optics. The the Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman, you put them like even you got to put them up there together. That's why Captain Marvel got her solo movie. Black Widow is not on that level. Like, I'm sorry, she she can't be and stuff like that. So they're not going to give Black Widow a movie before they give Captain Marvel a movie because you got to remember Captain Marvel just it beat Wonder Woman in the box office totals. Yes, but Brad. I think even with Black Widow, though, I feel like the thing is Black Widow, before these movies, much like all the other Avengers, nobody cared who, like, nobody cared about those characters, really. Like, Black Widow was a character that in comics or not in comics, in cartoons would pop in, pop out for an episode because you were doing something like high security, high clearance, a shield mission, et cetera, et cetera. But you would never, like, there wasn't, like, a bunch of episodes where it was like, oh, yeah, Natasha Romanoff coming in. There was, you know what I mean? Like, she wasn't, I, she I wasn't a character that was revered in that, in that way until these movies. And I think, like, just in terms of the timeline and how everything was, like, flowing and because of the nature of her character being essentially built around the idea of people having secrets, it's like, when you once you reveal the secret, it takes it takes a lot away from like the power of the character and the mystique of the character. True. And now that she's dead in the MCU and she's not going to do anything to affect the timeline moving forward from Endgame, you can go back and say, "This is who she was. This is what she did. This is Budapest. This is so that." This, this movie is just to and honor her sacrifice. In a way, I <laughs> you see what I'm, I'm saying. Not, I don't want no, this no, movie I'm to be this, no, no. I'm saying a token I'm saying that movie. Because I know because... stuff about the movie that I can't say. Okay, all right, fair enough. <laughs> then I, then I, then I, would, I would not challenge you, Brett. What do you? That's all I'm saying. Say? In a way. Okay, stop, okay. stop, okay. Brett. Go ahead. What do you got? The only thing that I will say is that based upon the time of 2017, we're right up in the heyday of female empowerment. We're getting proper attention paid to equality for a woman whose main superpower is being badass and over sexualized would do her cinematic for that not her comic power get it right well you know that will not do is disrespect black widow as a result of her being the fine ass scarlett johansson that's what you won't do I will not disrespect my future <laughs> wife, Scarlett Johansson, like that. However, Nor will you if you're going for a female empowerment movement, you she want class over looking hot. And Captain Marvel, as much as I thought the movie was a man, was a better way to go about it. Wonder Woman was the right way to go about it. Certainly wasn't over Wonder Woman is the personification of class more often than not unless you know you have like dark iterations no, wonder woman is strength and power and compassion and love like and truth truth yes. yeah so it's all about truth yeah because those two women would have been where i would have gone if you just pick any part of the catalog unfortunately okay 
And right. Black Widow right. wouldn't have made it due to, uh, you know, being a character who can e be easily played upon because she wears tight outfits or she makes men think things that aren't really what it is, like how she did in the whole Avengers scene where he's like, oh, yeah, I've got you. And she's like, really? You're giving me literally everything I want right now. A whole chair scene where she whoops some serious ass. And where, yeah. where did he go? Where, where did we lose him? He probably needed more <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> right now, like we are, we are literally at that beautiful, beautiful. Or he's probably going to find a comic or something. He's going something to prove me wrong, just because. Like, like here we go. Yeah. Pick on I the non-comic like related that, guy. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the fact that like we don't necessarily even really have like a great impression of like who Black Widow is via the comics says a lot about like how much Scarlett Johansson elevated the role in everybody's eyes in a way because when you think Black Widow, you think like when you think certain characters, there's like multiple actors or like cartoon iterations that you can think of. But I feel like when you think Black Widow, it's Scarlett Johansson. You know what I mean? No, because it's automatically that's where we like some strange Russian redhead who was like yeah. Nick Fury's assistant. It was like a shadow with like a, a red wig and some red lips because that's like what the comic covers like used a lot of those like comic covers used to kind of have that noir feel where it was like oversimplified art and you know it was like crosshairs and like a red wig, red lips, but everything else is black. And the crosshairs are in the shape of like the Black Widow like logo or something like spider that because icon. it was yeah, yeah it was it was it was all about being covert and being under the radar and so you know like i said i feel like i understand the point of like in terms of what black widow meant to the mcu and scarlett johansson's star power most people and i think most studios would have felt pressure to give her a movie or multiple movies and looking at it and saying like, well, she was good in Cap Winter Soldier. She was good in Iron Man 2. She's a star. People like this character. Yeah, let's give her a movie. And I think for them to kind of say like, but what does, what would her movie mean if we did it right now? What would it undo for her character moving forward if we did it right now? Versus like, now what I, what I will say is maybe they could have done it between Endgame and Infinity War the way that they, so her, they, what, her last they did that more heroic what did they put between Endgame and infinity war oh it was ant-man 2 so maybe but like ant-man 2 actually affects the events of like in game and infinity war directly you know I mean? directly yeah. so so i think like when they looked at like all the films and the characters and like what they were trying to preserve I don't think that there was anything that they could necessarily fit in, but you can create a movie and give it like an Ant-Man 2 thing where what you're doing in this movie actually is affecting like things moving forward directly and indirectly, whether these characters directly know what they're doing is affecting stuff or not. And so that's kind of so where I'm looking at. Here's, it my cinematic, Widow where, here's my cinematic pitch for Black Widow coming in prior to Endgame. We know that after all of the movies that come out, we know that from the last time we see Black Widow is Infinity War. In Infinity War, she is not blonde. She does not have short hair. She comes back in Endgame with short hair and is blonde because there was that five-year that, that five time skip after the stat. Or what do they call it? After the event. So it's during that five year time period that her movie comes out because we need to understand. We need to know. I just I genuinely believe that her movie needed to come out before Endgame simply for the fact that it would have. So I'm just noticing that Will has on an Avengers hoodie. He had on the N7 hoodie earlier. Now he's got on an Avengers hoodie. This is a Ronin. Ronin. That, right, specifically the Ronin, but earlier you had on the N7 hoodie from Mass Effect. 
But no, but what we know about Black Widow's timeline, her movie, is supposed to take She like, actually does have blonde hair in Infinity War also. Yeah. The movie the looked, timeline the timeline is actually they're like they didn't sign the like whatever and they've been like on the run. And Right, because it's after the events. And of when they Civil show, because when they show up, okay, no, you, no, 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 okay, you're right, you're right. After the events of Civil War, I'm on my third, but <laughs> we're not gonna call that as an excuse. I messed up, so this is but my yeah, limit. Whatever Will no was more. saying, <laughs> what okay. were you saying, Will? Sorry. Oh no, I was just saying that it was between Civil War and Infinity War, so like that's where the timeline is. So it's not gonna be anything post Infinity War or anything you have to do with that five years in between. It's, everything's gonna happen beforehand. So Okay. Just, See and that and and knowing that makes a difference because admittedly I'm not gonna lie, I did not know when this movie takes place. I assume that the movie would take place before Endgame, obviously, for obvious reasons. It has to take place before Endgame. Can't take place after Endgame. Sad face. That makes me sad to say that. But I'd have no idea prior to where this movie actually takes place. You know what I'm saying? Like, and thinking about it. So if in, in Infinity War, if she's bl- short hair, blind in Infinity War, then when we have the five year time skip to Endgame, it's the same person. Nothing has changed. Getting that difference of who she was in Avengers, who she was in Sokovia, who she was when she was trying to tell Hulk not to like, you know what I'm saying? Son's getting real low, big guy, and she's trying to get him off the plane and he's heading out. At that point, that person who is not the same person when she joined Nick Fury, when she became an Avenger, when she joined up with Shield, who was just a spy and didn't care about anything, she's obviously gone through some changes and is a different person. That is the moment where we need to understand and examine who she is, who she's become, and get that difference. And even if we had gone as far as as far, excuse me, Asgard, right? Asgard. Even if we had gone Asgard back, but no, Sorry. even if we had gone as far back, those are actually very similar in sound. But even if we had gone as far back as when she had the conversation with Loki or when she had the conversation with Hawkeye, when he had been turned by the scepter and she was trying to bring him back and she was kind of talking about her past, either one of those moments would have been a perfect opportunity to revisit who she is. Now, Jeff, to your point, I understand that we needed we needed to have everything that took place in Civil War. No, it, we needed everything that took place in Winter Soldier in order to like really have an understanding of who she is as a person. In game and Infinity War, she was just. That was just character acting. She was just there to fight, to beat some people up, and move the story along. We got a little bit of emotion between her and Cap in Endgame when they're like, you know, she's like running everything and she's just talking to people. Nothing nothing definitive. Nothing that needed backstory to explain what's what. That is what she does. That, And she even explains it right there in that scene where she talks about how she never had a family. Now she has a family. So prior to that conversation, we need a little bit of backstory to understand that she never really had a family because it looks to me from the trailer, like she got a whole damn family. We got a whole dad. That's the red crimson. She got a mama at the table. She got sisters. What you mean? You ain't never had a family. Like I need this movie to come out before infinity war and in game so that it makes sense. So that Shout out we, to Taskmaster. So that we feel and we understand why her sacrifice means something. The only reason anybody cared about her sacrifice in Endgame is because she'd been in like eight movies. And truthfully, I don't shit in eight movies. Wait a minute. I don't even think she's truthfully been in eight movies. It just feels like she's been in a lot of damn movies. 
You know what I'm saying? Because the MC, because we know the MCU is 22 movies, Six. saying that she's been in eight movies doesn't sound like a lot. You see, it's over a third of it. I think six, because she was in all four Avengers movies. So it's four Avengers well, movies. Shoot, no, actually, four Avengers Iron movies. Man. Cap Civil War. Iron so, Man 1, Iron 2, Man two so we got 7, and Winter Soldier. Look at that. I'm shooting from the hip. What did I say? Eight movies. I do this. I do this, dog. It's cool. You would have lost on Price is Right. <laughs> Look, I said the right I number won. without going over. <laughs> I said the right number. No, was, you said eight. And how many did we come up with? Seven. Yeah, we got seven. So you won over. You still at the podium. I'm wait, on the wait, stage wait. Okay, right so now. Let's, with let's, you. Oh, but you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna call that the fact that winner that uh, Black Widow is already wrapped and ready to release. That's number eight. Boom. No, actually, that, <laughs> be, no, that should be number nine. Boom. Where would that be now? Oh, so there it's already eight. Either way, I'm winning. Pick how you how you want me to win. Do you want me to win? Yeah, it is already eight eight existing movies. While we're counting the Black Widow movies, <laughs> I think we've had enough fun with the MCU for one evening. <laughs> Will, and give me, okay, I'm gonna let Will be the definitive count here. Where, but you where want, the eight but, movies? So you got Iron Man two. Check. All right, you got Avengers. Check. All right, you got Winter Soldier. Check. Age of Ultron. Check. Civil War. Check. All right. Infinity War. Check. Captain Marvel. Where was she in Captain She's Marvel? in Captain Marvel. Uncredited. She's in it. Where is she in Captain Marvel? Towards uh the re- uh, reset. She's in the movie. I think it's one of the the scenes ends up, but she's credit she's credited in the movie. Or she's uncredited in the movie, but she appears in the movie. She has a movie credit for it. And then Endgame. So we come up with seven and we have an uncredited. Uh, okay. So I'm going to say, <laughs> look, I'm going to say I did not count Captain Marvel. I counted the Black Widow movie that we're waiting to release as my number eight. <laughs> when, I said, when I was throwing out eight, that was where that came from. I... I subconsciously counted, and I knew that it was eight. Will counted. Will points out nine if she has the uncredited cameo, in which case I had the closest number without going over. <laughs> but you're going to give me my eight movies because Black Widow is a movie. It exists. But you said you said the I reason said, she got the Black Widow movie was because she appeared in like eight other movies. So you can't count the movie that she got because so she, she appeared in, in Captain the other Marvel. Movies. Will just pointed out to you. She <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just try to tip that back? I told you I would. Whichever way without makes it work, you can, you can have the Captain Marvel. Whichever way giving. makes it work, I don't. I don't count the Captain Marvel. But okay, realistically, the point was she had a lot of movies, and out of twenty-two, that's a big number. That's a large part. She's not a bit player. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I feel like it's honestly been totally disrespectful to who the character is, to who she is. Not even who she is from a comic standpoint as a part of the Avengers or who that character is as a character, but to the role that this character has played to the MCU, they are not giving her the respect she deserves. And I think the fact that they moved on and did something with Ronan and gave him something new and different was completely disrespectful to Black Widow. And that's my piece. She's blonde in, in the Captain Marvel movie. I'm just saying. Well, I'm not going to go into that. Would, details, that would be why I didn't recognize her because I don't recognize the blonde the hair. They're sitting there with Captain America, freaking, and, and Mark Ruffalo, and they're looking at the pager. Like, what the fuck is this? Y'all remember that scene at all? Oh, in the oh, post credits. Oh, yeah. Well, got it. When the pager, well like, yep. well stops going, oh, the pager, yeah. I got you, Sam. I got you. Wait. That, that wasn't that an in game? No. No. No, that was that was actually because it, it oh, gave the, the whole pagers, Captain Marvel will return. Now the pager okay. like stopped, right? Yep. All right. Okay. Let's wrap this up while it's all. All right. All right. All right.
All right, I'll give you a post credit scene. <laughs> they have just wanted his bully. Look, if she was credited, then it counts. I, but either way, you know what I'm saying? Like, realistically, if I was off by one movie out of 22, my bad for not, like, I've been drinking. We're just going to leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what all it right. is. So, right, come so, on. Close it out, Brent. Come on. It's all good. He's got the editing software. I keep trying to push him. Okay, so well, let's. He's all in right, charge of I will shit. push. I will push forward, and we will go on and close this thing out. Brent presented us tonight with a one v one of how to fix slash change the MCU. You had some great admins on here tonight. You have myself. I am Sam. Joining me was Brent. We had Jeffrey, and we had Will show up. Will shaved, but I love it, and it looks fantastic, and he did not cut his hair. For those of you who have watched other videos, his hair is not cut. He did change out of his N7 Mass Effect Spectre hoodie into his Ronin Avengers hoodie, because Will can do that type of thing. I can't do that type of thing. I'm wearing the same Naruto Uzumaki t-shirt that I had on in my last video. Um... We're going to give a quick shout out to Mad Engine because Mad Engine is keeping me safe with a face mask. They made a face mask. I am wearing one. It is a plain ass, boring ass face mask, but I feel protected and maybe I will go out to a movie theater as a result because I have my face mask and that is that is what's up. Um, I want to thank everyone who was actually on the call with me tonight. I want to thank Brent. I want to thank Jeff. I want to thank Will. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. Um, for those of you who are, in fact, interested in what we have to say, you are welcome to actually join us on our YouTube channel. You can find that in the QR code in the top right corner of the screen. That will take you directly to our YouTube page. If you are not a member of our Facebook page, that is in the top left-hand screen. So if it's covering me, it's Facebook. If it's covering Brent, that is YouTube. Uh, does anybody have any final thoughts before we close this bad boy out? I have one last one. Be sure to check us out on Anchor, which will redirect you to Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, or where I personally listen to us on Spotify. I just have All to make version. that a sound bite because he says that so beautifully every time. That is what's up. Um, for those of you who are actually members of our Facebook group, what you can do is you can go to our announcements. There is a link that says Grown A Geeks Anchor. If you click that and you go through the comments, I have each one of the links to all of the different podcasts listed right there and available for you for easy access to everything. Uh, I want to thank Jeff for giving us all of the inside information about how not movies, all of it. <laughs> well, everything that he was allowed to give. A couple times. <laughs> no, just everything yeah. he's allowed to give. You know what I'm saying? He oftentimes he just he just stops talking and it pisses me off because it's like I want to know and he won't tell me, and it's 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 all right. I get it. I understand. Uh, but he gave us some great insight on how movies are made and why they're made the way they're made and maybe why this didn't happen or why that didn't happen. It's always beautiful to have him on any conversation because he brings so much insight. Uh, Will came on tonight and just reminded us that he is just so fucking knowledgeable on everything. Like a Even after six shots of tequila. No, that is like, we're That's up to like, or eight. Nine like eight. eight or nine. We're like eight, dog. You stop counting. I lost counting. track. <laughs> you stop counting. He's on like eight shots. I'm only... I'm only four glasses in, and he's on like eight shots. I don't know who's I gone you more. Three. Oh no, you got refill. Forgot. Yep. Right, because the wife was off screen and brought me a drink, and Tiffany called me out about my wife, but he does that. Years anyway. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here with us. We ask you to make sure you like and subscribe. Click the bell notification so you can find out when new videos get loaded. Make sure you check out our sports podcast, which is called Gag on These Balls. Be sure to check out our other playlist, which is our top five series where we talk about the top five of each genre. We go through a handful of genres. This has actually been an episode of our admin chat. We thank you for listening. Be sure to be a member, and we will talk with you later. Peace. Peace.